now I'm going to show you some of the actual microscope capabilities uh, with the Celestron microscope. So basically, like I said in my last video, I haven't gotten the Celestron software to actually work with my computer, but I did get the software from another company called Pluggable to actually work. And it is pretty simple software. It basically allows you to take still photos, delayed photos, and videos. And if you go ahead and click on the settings, you can actually play around with some of the settings. You can take photographs that are fairly high resolution, but your videos, unfortunately, are going to be pretty small. Now, like I said, your computer does recognize this as a video camera. So you can also record presumably much larger videos in QuickTime. Now, of course, because I am actually recording this on QuickTime right now and doing a screen capture, I can't do a screen capture in a screen capture. I might make a separate video showing you what it looks like when you do this in Zoom and in QuickTime, but for now, let's just show you what it looks like within Pluggable, which is a free to download software that I found pretty easily. You can see here, these are some photos that I've already taken of some insects, but I'm gonna show you what it actually looks like. So we're gonna start with a mid-size, I think this is a Cerambicid, so kind of right here. I just got this on a little bit of clay. Gonna turn up my light for one thing. Turn up my light there, quite bright. Gonna play with the focus on the head. And I'm gonna find that I need to actually change where I'm located on the stand. So I'm going to raise, I'm actually gonna lower the stand like so. So yeah, let's say like around there. And now I can play around again with the focus on the head. And I can also move my specimen a little bit. And play around with the fine focus. So according to my little ruler here, this insect is not quite Actually, it's about a centimeter. So this insect is about a centimeter. Pretty common for your general entomology student. Your first, you know, first time student is probably going to feel pretty comfortable uh, identifying an insect that they can pin instead of point mount. I don't know if you've noticed this, but students are pretty reluctant to point mount insects because they're worried that they're not going to be able to identify them. Uh, so basically I'm showing you something that's on maybe not quite the smallest end of insects that can be pinned, uh, but it's not the largest insect either. So as you can see, I'm getting some pretty good detail here, and I can certainly zoom in further, by the way. I can, I can get very far in. I can lower my microscope head even further down by sliding it down on that stand. Tighten that back up there. Change the focus again and play around with it. So you can certainly get a lot of detail. I don't think a student would have any issue identifying this to family. They can certainly do things like count the number of tarsi. Like I said, this is something I might consider more for the instructor. It is a higher price range at around $120 than what I would expect a student to actually buy. Um, but I think for an instructor, this is going to be particularly useful. Like I said, I do have a actual stereo microscope that does have a cell phone lens adapter, but honestly, it takes so long to get that cell phone lined up just perfectly that it's really cumbersome. And half the time I'm worried that my cell phone is going to drop out and I'm going to break my cell phone. So I think weirdly enough, a digital microscope is actually better for instructor purposes. I certainly am going to keep my stereo microscope. It's much better for actually doing research at home. But I think for lecturing, uh, something like a good digital microscope is the way to go. So just for the sake of argument, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do something really much smaller than this beetle. Let's let's go to a nice small point mounted wasp. Now for some of you Microhymenoptera fans out there, this obviously isn't the smallest wasp. This thing is going to be about, oh, I think three or four millimeters. So we can certainly get smaller. But let's see what we can get with just right where I am right now. I'm gonna increase the brightness 
So by the way, I was not fully bright. So you, that's the low range. This is the high range. Not the nicest mounted specimen. But you can see that you can indeed get quite close. So I'm going to lower this on the stand again. I'm going to bring my head as far down as I can. Like that. Going to change the focus, play with the minor focus here. And this is a nice shiny black wasp, so it is a little bit difficult to get a good image of it, but you can get some idea of the functionality here. So this is quite small, it's dark colored, it's very shiny. This would be hard to get a good image of with a regular stereo microscope, uh, much less a digital microscope. So now we're going to go even smaller. So here is a wasp that's probably about half the size of that last one. I'm going to have to raise my stand again just to position this. This is probably only about two or three millimeters. Very tiny little wasp. <laughs> you can see my point mount right there. Tightening up the head again. Sort of positioning this. And like I said, you know, imagine having to do this with a regular microscope. It would be really annoying. Oops. Oops. And I did it bad. <laughs> blooper um so let's see i wonder if i totally destroyed that specimen oh no i just you know what i did i actually pushed it down too far against the against the clay so let's see if we can get this back into focus all right there it is So I've only been doing this for a couple of minutes. Um, as you can see, there there are some like fun issues here that you have to deal with. You definitely want to practice around with this, unlike me, before you go ahead and make some videos. But let me try to reposition this again so I don't accidentally slide it down. Okay. There you go. So quite a small wasp. You can probably identify this. Most of your students, if they're introductory students, are probably going to, av to avoid even trying to identify something this small. So this is the tiniest insect that I currently have pinned right now. Maybe just a couple of, of millimeters, maybe around three millimeters or so. So let's see what we can do next. Let's go to the other side of the size range. So now I'm going to go with a big insect. This thing is probably around, let's see, uh, two and a half centimeters, if I were to guess. And it's just a big old robber fly. So with something like this, I'm definitely going to have to raise the, micro the microscope all the way out. Let me get this in focus. And there you go. So I am zoomed out as far as possible right now. And obviously I'm not actually able to get the whole insect in view. Um, I don't really think this is a problem for my purposes, but just as a reminder, you can actually take off the entire microscope from the stand, slide that out, and then use that to basically zoom in any which way you want. So let me make a little bit more room here. It is a little bit hard to manipulate because you are upside down. So this is me trying to use the microscope with it out, with it not actually being in a stand. And as you can see, it is really quite difficult to get a steady image, but I can fit the whole insect in here. 
this is one of the times that it might actually be inconvenient that the Celestron doesn't have a button on the body where you could take a photo because I'm struggling to get a steady image as it is. Um, and I have to have a free hand to like actually take a photo. So that is quite difficult. And as you saw, that took a photo right there. So that's just to let you know, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in its stand. Put this rabbit fly back here. Now we're looking at the tail end of this thing. And you know, that's pretty much the functionality here. Um, so if you're using pluggable, as you probably saw, you just click here to take a picture to start a video because maybe you're doing some sort of walkthrough for your students. You just click that green video camera. You do everything that you want to do. You know, maybe reposition this so that you could talk about different features and stuff like that. You know, talk about that super muscly thorax and whatever. Um, and that's basically the functionality. So like I said, I could not get uh, Celestron's software to work with my computer. I'm still waiting to hear back from them. Uh, but if all you're doing is taking videos for your students or doing sort of live identification sessions like I am remotely over Zoom, this is going to be pretty good for that. So this is a pretty powerful little USB microscope. Like I said, perhaps out of the price range of most students, but I think it's a good purchase if you are a professor and you hopefully are getting reimbursed and you just want something that's going to make sort of uh, taxonomic work-throughs of different insect families and orders, something that you can do over the computer. You can still try to struggle with a regular stereo microscope and a, um, a cell phone lens adapter, but like I said, that is really difficult, and when you're trying to move fast, it's probably not going to be the best option. Now, if you're one of those lucky professors that has a trinocular stereo microscope that automatically has a digital camera attached to it, uh, power to you, you're obviously going to want to use that. Uh, but if you're like me, my actual microscope with a camera in it is at my office where I'm currently not permitted to go. So this is my review of the Celestron. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I will review a somewhat less expensive model that I think will be a better purchase for students. Thank you.